the man who went down from the stage and prevented police from acting against those who were creating disturbance has he been appointed in the chief minister's office because of that great thing which he did these are my questions i am not asking any official agency to investigate i am asking you to investigate instead of devoting their attention to the roads are in bad condition there are so many problems lottery and alcohol is our main source of revenue what a shame instead of doing anything for the people of kerala instead of developing the infrastructure instead of building the roads instead of improving the tourism infrastructure all their attention is focused on silencing those who differ with them and they are not ready to spare even the raj bhavan can you imagine anybody nobody I, and i'm saying it with all uh, clarity in my mind nobody has any authority to give directions to the raj bhavan whom i should have in my personal staff how the affairs should be conducted the only authority in india is president of india and here a secretary of the government of kerala is forced to write a letter to the raj bhavan trying to dictate how raj bhavan should run its affairs and what ultimately they had to eat humble pie the day i asked for his removal i was fully aware that man is innocent but i wanted to send a message that these pressure tactics are not going to work on me but even that has not opened their eyes they continue for how many days before the i ask you for how many days write ups were appearing in the press government is going to curtail the power of governor was it happening before the passage of bill or not i ask you who was sponsoring those articles i have already told you you take over as chancellor why don't you take over where is the, who are you to curtail my powers my powers come from constitution and conventions it is not your sweet will you have freedom to malign to to undermine to malign to heap indignity on the you are going to cut my powers who are you i have administered oath of office to you you have not you they have crossed all the limits this is a letter which chief minister had written to me and i will ask them to provide a copy wo oh. na no. prince sir aapke paas hai wo oh. three letters of the chief minister and my replies you have that yes first letter or this is the last letter no this is the this is the first letter which i wrote on december 8 copy will be supplied to you wherein yes i said i am sick of this pressure which is brought upon me and i don't want to continue as chancellor if i had any vested interest why i would say that i don't want to continue uh, as chancellor and i said in this letter that i know that the assembly is not since the session assembly is not in session you can go for an ordinance and i promise that i shall sign the same immediately but you become chancellor relieve me of this duty why i was forced to write that letter chief minister personally came to raj bhavan and requested me that in the matter of the appointment of kannur university vice chancellor that is his home district agree with him 
that I will give weightage to your opinion. You are democratically elected leader. Yes, I shall give weightage to your opinion. But we, ha we have to go through a process. I mean, that we did not discuss. We started the process for the selection of the vice chancellor. And my view was that since I have given word to the chief minister, I will, after the three, the panel sends three names, selection committee, they send three names, then I will consult him and I will try to go by his choice. They possibly realize that the man of their choice may not find place in that panel. Therefore, chief minister, office people, they contacted me, they came here and they said that since you have given word to uh, chief minister, that man of his choice will be appointed. Therefore, why go through the process? I said, no, we should go through the process. Then his secretary, uh, uh, his uh, legal consultant, he produced a document. This is the opinion of the advocate general also that direct appointment can be made. I ask you this question. If I have some legal problem, facing some pro legal problem, formally speaking, legally speaking, whom I should consult? AG of the state, Advocate General. Advocate General, without my asking, the opinion is already there. I have not asked for this opinion. The opinion he produced. I said, why I should believe that this is from AG? This is or has not been signed. OK. Can we come in the evening again? I said, most welcome. They come in the evening and they produce not only the, the opinion of the AG, but also the request from the education minister who happens to be pro-chancellor. Same thing. And saying that I'm sending the opinion of advocate general. Now what was the course open for me? To enter into a legal battle because AG opinion is already there. And I had give, I'm saying, I'm not defending. I have already said that that was not right on my part to make that promise. I have already admitted to that mistake many times. But I had given word, it is true. I had not given word that I shall scuttle the process. They forced me with the letter of the Advocate General to scuttle the process. And Chief Minister in his defense said that under article so and so, governor acted on the advice of the AG. AG immediately next day clarified the position that Raj Bhavan never sought my advice. Advice was given to the education ministry who had sought my advice. Why education ministry sought his advice? To bring pressure on me. I realized that this pressure is going to continue. Therefore, I decided that I should not continue as chancellor. And I wrote the letter, which I have already told you, and they will provide the copies in which I said, I am ready to sign even an ordinance. You become the chancellor. Now, this letter was replied on December 8 itself. I am not going into it. I did not accept in which request was made to me to continue as chancellor. I, I did not accept it. I wrote on the same date, uh, next day, December 9, saying that I do not accept the explanations which you have given and I stand by my decision. The reply came on 16 December, again requesting me that I will have to continue as Chancellor. Then even this I rejected. But I said, why continue this letter writing? I do not have that kind of relationship that I should enjoy reading these letters. So I, I said, now I'm not going to comment. If when I did not comment, then on, where is the last letter? Yes, it is here, the last letter. The last letter, all the ifs and buts and to give you the complete story, a senior officer of the government came to Raj Bhavan with a draft. 
and requesting me, ask me what I want to be written so that I, I can continue as chancellor. I made some modifications in that draft. And then this letter, same evening, came from Chief Minister. And the earlier letter also, he had said that government does not have any proposal to make any change in the, as far as the selection of the vice chancellor is concerned. He has written in his letter, you will read it. More interesting is something else which I will tell you about Professor Sienna Rao and Professor Panikar. If I forget, please remind me. Now, this finally, this letter came, which was on 13th January, in which all ifs and buts were dropped. I was requested to continue as chancellor. I was assured. Now, I'm quoting from the letter of the chief minister. I am of the considered opinion there should not be any intrusion into the academic autonomy of the universities from any quarter, leave alone government. He assured me that he will ensure there is no interference by the government or any other agency. I have not written this letter. He has signed it this letter. And now what they are doing? They are not only changing the law, but saying in that law that there will be five members of the selection committee, three will be nom nominees of the government, and the decision will be taken by majority. Academic matters decision will be taken by majority. So does he remember what he had written to me?